I don't know if you want to talk about your brother. I, know, I read that you found Chris, your brother. I did. Dead in his hotel room? Uh, uh, it was our, our apartment, yeah, in Chicago. What was, how old were you at the time? Let's see. He was 33, so I would have been 29. Really? Yeah, about four years, Bart. So if you don't mind talking about it, if you don't, I totally understand. Uh -huh. What was it like to walk into the apartment and there he is dead? Uh, at first, I thought it was a joke. And then uh, it turned, uh, at first I thought it was a joke, and I was like, come on, get up, we gotta get going. Then I realized it was horrific, it was something wrong. Panic ensues, um, bringing in your ear, uh, making all the wrong phone calls, calling the police, and I'm like, ah, oh, he's dead, and calling ambulances, because they're all on. <laughs> Chris Farley is in the, and yeah. then all the reporters are on there. Yeah. So then I made that mistake, and I got the entire uh, news and police force circling the John Hancock building. Um, but, uh, yeah, that was a tough one. Uh, that was rough. And then making the phone call to your father and mother. Oh, and that's yeah. a tough one, too. Yeah. Why do you say that? Hey, uh, Johnny, what's going on? I was like in Chicago. And then the next sentence out of your mouth has got to be, Chris is dead. And that wasn't easy. So that's a tough one. Yeah. Are you over it now? Am I over it? No, you're never over it. It's always there, and it always will. Uh, I always see it, and uh, it's always, uh, um, yeah, I always have it. It'll, it won't go away. Was it like a shock to walk in and see him dead? Yes. It was a shock to your system? Shock, huh? yeah, it, 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 all the senses, the smells, the sights, the feelings. It's, uh, it's something you've never, unless you have experienced that, uh, it's different than you've ever experienced. Yeah, never had that, uh, never never again have I had that. Thank goodness. Yeah. Um, so, uh, because that's not like watching grandma die in the hospital. Right, that's it's right. It's a little different. So, uh, yeah, it's a lot different. So no. when you, uh, before you found him dead, were there any clues that he would do something like that? Or, no, I, he, or didn't, it, he didn't want to do that. Uh, uh, no, uh, there was no, uh, no. We don't. Uh, we didn't believe that would happen, sort of thing. So were, no. Were there any clues that you were like unhappy or no, no. maybe just you know no. like it's all. It was all fun and games. So oh. we were just we were we weren't. <laughs> we're not a sad family. It's like right. I'm just going <laughs> to kill myself. We are all just like let's have fun, and I guess we had too much fun. I saw a documentary on his life. I was watching some documentary program, uh -huh. and I saw this. And I always thought him funny. He was like really yeah. excellent comedian. He's funny. And uh, but uh, I saw this documentary about him, and it said that. And I, you know, you never can believe films anyway, or right. what people say. But it said that he was not happy playing a fat person. He wasn't happy eating out of food and stuff like that. Yeah. He did it, but inwardly he wasn't really happy that way. He didn't want people to see him as the fat guy. Right. Blah blah. blah. Is that true? Ah, uh, yeah, sure. It was. It, it's true. Uh, yeah, you don't want to be the uh, fat guy. He'd yeah. always look at like stuff. And then uh, I have uh, what's called an enormous head. And so uh, we'd go to uh, my brother would take me to hat stores. He'd be like, "Yeah, try this hat on." And it was like <laughs> tiny. Yeah. I was like, "Ah, none of these hats fit in the store." He goes, "That's how I feel going to a. I can't buy off the rack." Yeah. And I go, "Oh, I, don't, I get it. Yeah, because there's some cool hats here I'd love to buy." Yeah. And he goes, "I can't do that." But when I looked at uh, nowadays, which is strange, uh, I've tried on some of his, my brother Kevin tried on one of his leather coats and it didn't fit him. And he goes, wait a minute, <laughs> am I bigger than Chris was? Because <laughs> it was, uh, it fit, it did fit Chris. <laughs> and he goes, what's going on here? So maybe they made clothes differently back then. That's what we're going with. That's yeah. the, um, but uh, no, he didn't, uh, it's not that he, and he, he would never get mad that like, hey, you're, unless it was somebody that was, that was trying to hurt him by going, you're fat. Uh, but if they said it in a funny way, he could laugh that off. He'd be like, mm, whatever. Um, but if they were trying to hurt him <clears throat> by saying you're fat, right. then he'd get upset. Um, but if, for the most part, he would, uh, yeah, he didn't, he didn't like it only for the, uh, he used it. Let's right. just say he'd always have fun using it. Right. Like, uh, so he'd be like, oh, it's because I'm fat. <laughs> he'd say something funny like that. Yeah. Because it would be a way to, like, maneuver conversations. 
He was good at that. He could turn anyone that hate, the hate that people have, he could turn anyone around. The biggest, ugliest, meanest looking bouncer or guy out there that uh, was had not a funny bone in his body. Yeah. Chris could pull his pants down or do something with his cheeks or do push-ups or do something funny, anything, and he would turn that guy's frown upside down and make him at least laugh.